Hello again! This video will be somewhat different than the others. Instead of describing a country's efforts in the Great War, I will focus on Hungary's first and last battleship, SMS St. Istvan. This dreadnought-class monstrosity was late to the party, she did not participate in major naval battles, but her career is still interesting. Along with the other great powers, Austria-Hungary also started spending more money on its navy in the early 1900s. The naval race in the Mediterranean was not as hectic as it was between Germany and Britain, mainly because here Italy was the likely opponent, but the two countries engaged in a serious competition nonetheless. Initially, Italy had the advantage with 18 battleships versus 6 Austrian vessels, but the introduction of the revolutionary dreadnought battleship by Great Britain, with its 10 large caliber guns, changed everything. Suddenly, everybody wanted to build similar huge ships, somewhat resembling the nuclear race of the 1950s and 60s. While a scandal delayed further expansion in Italy, Austria-Hungary started an expansion program in 1904, trying to gain an advantage. It initially called for 12 battleships, but in 1909, a year after the Bosnian crisis, four dreadnoughts were added to the list, so the new and expanded navy would consist of 16 battleships, 12 cruisers, 24 destroyers, 72 seagoing torpedo boats, and 12 submarines. Unlike the last pre dreadnoughts, the three ships of the Radetzky class, these newcomers were much bigger, with a displacement of 20,000 tons, not to mention their big guns. While ships of the Radetzky class had four 30.5 cm Skoda naval guns, their successors carried 12 of these, along with 12 15 cm guns and some other smaller weapons, but four torpedo tubes were also included. Thick armor provided protection to the 1,000 strong crew, a double bottom was included against naval mines, optical rangefinders helped with targeting, while two steam turbines provided 26,000 horsepower and a speed of 20 knots. These ships carried more than 1,800 tons of coal and some fuel oil, which increased the burn rate. Their range almost reached 8,000 kilometers, or 5,000 miles, so it was obvious that priorities have changed, the main goal was no longer coastal defense, but increased presence on the high seas, although Austria-Hungary could not easily reach the Atlantic. Financing this naval expansion was an extremely difficult task. The size of the Navy's budget reached 63 million krone in 1907, a year later it was 73 million krone, and even this was considered inflated. However, each ship of the new Tegetov class was to cost 60 million, and this increased requirement coincided with a political crisis in Hungary, where the Wekerle cabinet collapsed and parliament was unable to pass a budget. Admiral Rudolf Montecuccoli, with the support of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, heir to the throne, and Chief of Staff Konrad von Hötzendorf, struck a secret deal with the Rothschild family in Austria, they provided the funding, with a promise that the government would buy the ships once they were ready. Initially, two ships were ordered, two more would follow later on. These plans were leaked to the public, so Italy also started to build more new battleships. Their first dreadnought, the Dante Alighieri, was laid down at a shipyard in 1909, its construction proceeded, followed by three ships of the Conte di Cavour class, which were even bigger. Once the crisis passed, the 1910 budget was finally approved in Hungary, with a small addition. A fourth ship under the name St. Istvan would be built by the Gans Danubius shipyard in Fiume. It would be the Hungarian member of this new class of battleships. The 1911 budget was then approved by both parliaments, with little opposition. The armor and the guns would be manufactured in the Austrian half of the empire, while the electrical wiring and equipment were to be assembled in Hungary. SMS Viribus Unitis was the first ship of this class. It was launched in June 1911. A year later, two more followed under the names Tegetov and Prince Eugen, 
These three ships were then commissioned before World War I. The fourth ship, SMS St. Istvan, was laid down in January 1912, but construction suffered delays as the Fiume shipyard had only built smaller merchant ships, so it had to be enlarged first to make room for such a huge vessel. Launching took place in January 1914, but more trials were needed before commissioning, so the ship missed the outbreak of the war and the Navy's raid on Ancona. Due to the Entente blockade at Otranto, most of the Austro-Hungarian ships, along with the 1st Battleship Division, were stuck in Pola, their main base. Direct confrontation was avoided, as their opponents were clearly superior in numbers. St. Istvan fired its first shot in November 1915, during its gunnery trials, which were followed by machinery trials and torpedo launches. In December, it was ready for action, so it officially joined 1st Battleship Division. Like most battleships, St. Istvan saw little action during the war, due to a fear of mines, lack of coal reserves, but also because no country wanted to lose their precious capital ships. Grand Admiral Anton Haus kept his ships in port at Pola and other places, which drew a lot of criticism, but in this way he also tied down significant Anton forces in the Mediterranean. The main objective was the full protection of the coast and the major ports of Trieste and Fiume, but also the Italian ships in Venice were prevented from joining their allies at the Otranto Barrage. Upon his death, House was succeeded by Maximilian Jagovan, who continued his strategy, so the Tekatov-class battleships rarely left their port. Some Italian airplanes and airships were shot down, but nothing else happened besides the visits of Emperor Karl I, and Kaiser Wilhelm II. In February 1918, as the economic situation worsened, around 4,000 sailors of the Austro-Hungarian Navy mutinied at Kataro, but after three days, loyal troops arrived. An ultimatum was issued, fire was exchanged, after which most rebels surrendered. Four sailors were executed, order was restored. Admiral Njegovan was fired, he was succeeded by Rear Admiral Miklos Horty, whose appointment alienated many of the older officers, but others hoped that he would finally engage the enemy at sea. He then took the fleet out of port for maneuvers and gunnery practice at a regular basis, and prepared for major engagement to restore morale, remove boredom, and make it easier for submarines to get out into the Mediterranean. A major offensive was being prepared for June 1918, Horty wanted to repeat his successful raid on the blockade that had taken place in the previous year. All four dreadnoughts would participate in the attack, along with three pre-dreadnoughts, four cruisers, four destroyers, and four torpedo boats, along with submarines and aircraft. Two cruisers and a few destroyers would attack the barrage, two others and their escorts would bombard naval and air stations at Otranto, the submarines and seaplanes would screen the fleet and hunt enemy warships at Valona and Brindisi, while the battleships would provide firepower and destroy the enemy if it showed up in force. On the 10th of June, St. Istvan and Tegetov were trying to catch up to the rest of the fleet, but St. Istvan's boilers overheated, so speed was reduced to 12 knots. After 3 a.m., two Italian torpedo boats spotted their smoke, they penetrated the escort screen and attacked the battleships. MES-21 launched torpedoes at Tegetov but missed, then MES-15's two torpedoes hit St. Istvan at the boiler rooms. Measures were taken, but the flooding could not be stopped, the ship started listing heavily. Tegetov, which initially took evasive maneuvers, soon returned and tried to tow her sister ship, but this failed as well. St. Istvan's crew assembled on deck as a counterbalance, ammunition was thrown overboard, but the ship was taking on too much water. Shortly after 6 a.m., the battleship capsized and sank, most of her crew survived, only 89 of them died out of around 1100. Film footage exists of the sinking, as there was an official film crew on the Tegatov, their recording is the only such footage from World War I. Horty believed that the element of surprise was lost, and Anton forces were ready to counter their attack, 
so he decided to return to port, where the fleet would remain for the rest of the war. This unfortunate event concluded the story of Hungary's only battleship, which never saw serious action and participated in a single major operation that had to be cancelled before it really started. The ship sank without firing his gun at the enemy. Thank you for watching. See you next time.